Uh, so this is going to be the next installment in the Black Hole series. I want to first apologize for taking so long um, to put this out. It's been a busy last few weeks. I haven't really had a whole lot of time to record. Um, but we are back and I have developed a better method for the next set of black holes. So uh, that those will be out in the next few days. I can assure you that. Um, so this in this installment, we are tackling the care black hole lensing. So care black holes are spinning black holes and they sort of drag light around with them. All right, that's why this shadow, the shadow in the center, uh, it's shifted a bit and it's a bit, I don't really know how to describe it. It's a bit uh, eccentrically shaped. <laughs> uh, so uh, you can, so with this method, you can control how much. Uh, so if I set this value to zero, you can see it's a regular Schwarzschild black hole. And then you can like control which direction, right? How much of it? Um, now you're going to have to be careful because uh, after you hit a certain threshold, which is generally around 1, um, you get odd artifacts. And this would be like beyond maximally spinning. So it's a bit odd. So the max I usually do is 1, but uh, if you want an interstellar look, probably 0 0.7 or 0 0.8 will get you there, right? Um, but let's go on to the tutorial. Uh, so we're going to need to do a few things. So this is a uh, derivative. Uh, this is sort of the same thing that we got uh, from the original lensing tutorial. I've made a few modifications, but um, it is the same. It is basically the same material. Now uh, I don't think I covered this in the first one. Should have reviewed it a bit more. Um, but all I'm doing here is I'm taking a color ramp. It's a constant value, and um, yeah, it looks something like this. I'm taking it from the output of this length node. And what this does is it basically it's creating a mask that just targets the center. And then I'm plugging this into a mix shader and mixing the refraction with nothing. Um, what this is going to do is, uh, well, I'll show you what happens without it uh, with some node setups. This gives you a little bit more de degrees of flexibility. Um, because it stops this stuff from happening in the center here. Uh, so yeah, that's something to consider when doing this. And if you're getting weird stuff happening in the center, if you don't have this, that's probably why. Uh, so let's go on to the next preliminary activity that we have to do. And that would be, we want to um, so we're going to need it. This is actually going to be camera dependent now, the care setup. Uh, that's a bit unfortunate because the flexibility with the uh, non-care setup was something that I really liked. Um, and it still works fine uh, when it's not tied to a camera. It's just the care effects are a bit directed towards the camera. So um, you might not get the full effect of those. Um, it's not a huge deal, just keep note of that. So what we're going to do is we're going to have our camera and make sure we are constraining the uh, lensing object or tracking it to the camera we're using. And then if you want to make it a bit easier uh, to just uh, move around without having to reset the camera each time, uh, in the view tab in this thing you can check camera to view. That's just going to keep the camera with your view unless you um, turn it off. Alright, so let's actually do something here. Okay, so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to use this texture coordinate and we're going to want to do a uh, separate RGB and we're going to be using the red channel because this splits it horizontally right and the care effects are horizontally based effects basically uh, so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to add some math nodes 
So you can see we this multiply is actually what we were using in the other one to control the strength of this effect. So set it to zero for now. Um, and then we'll slightly tune it a bit later. Um, what next? Okay. Um, so we are going to duplicate this and instead we're going to do an add. And we're going to add one to this and then we're going to duplicate our multiply. What we're going to want to do is we're going to want to put it right before where we're multiplying this layer weight and color ramp output right before that. And then connect the output of that node to the second input of that. Um, now you can put preview the refraction again and then you can mess with this and you can see it's sort of like it's being weird but it's sort of doing something right uh, so how are we going to remedy this we're going to duplicate our multiply node and then we take the output of this length and then add a power node plug the output of this length into the base and then exponent I like to use about negative two uh, you can experiment with this a bit um, but we're going to plug this into the second multiply. Now, you can see, you can see you get these weird effects. Um, let's see which values was I using for the other one. Oh, yes. You see, I'm a silly. Negative five and one. Forgot the add node. Okay, so let's go back to this one. So let's change this to negative five. Then um, add one. All right, now. Did I do something? What did I do? Well, that might explain it. Um, might not. I took the normal output. That's it. That's it. That's my my mistake. So instead of taking the object output here, try taking the normal output. It's gonna make your life a heck of a lot easier. And boom, there's some care effects. So yeah, mess around with this. Um, but I want to spend the next minute trying to explain a bit about um, what we're doing here and uh, why this actually happens in nature. Now I'm obviously not an astrophysicist so I cannot really do this topic justice um, but basically what happens and how I conceptualized it is in a spinning black hole the uh, space-time uh, space warping that it has uh, it kind of sort of helps light if lights go on for instance if the black hole is spinning uh, like counterclockwise just imagine it's not a 2d plane it's spinning counterclockwise if the light is sort of um, if the light is going with the direction of the light ray is going with the direction of the spin uh, the black hole sort of I guess helps it out so it has less effect um, but if it's opposing it, the black hole's influence sort of uh, s slows it down, I guess. And so unfortunately in Blender, we can't really get the direction of light rays at um, like when it's being refracted. So we've had to approximate with the position. Um, so it's not a perfect 
not a perfect match, but it's pretty close. And you can see the approximation sort of works. Now it's pretty cool because if you have a world um, texture, let's hide the accretion disk. Let's give our world texture some strength. Uh, the care black hole uh, warping, the lensing, you can see it looks pretty interesting. It's probably actually a little bit beyond maximally spinning. Um, let's change that. You can see it's sort of like stretched out a bit there. It's a bit odd. That's quite cool. Alright, so um, let's talk about uh, next videos. So we have um, coming up we're going to be working on some uh, black holes that are uh, scattering based that look sort of like these guys. Um, This is um, this is actually an incomplete version, which is why it has this little weird gradient there. Um, but you can see it's an entirely different look. It looks pretty cool. Uh, these are actually a bit simpler to create because you don't have to work with complex approximations of volumetric scattering effects. You can kind of just let the computer do most of the work. Um, but it's also rather slow. That's a nice black hole. Alright, so I'm going to sign off, guys. So, um, have a great rest of your day. Um, by the way, uh, if you haven't heard it already, we have, um, I have a Discord server. I'll link it in the description. Uh, you, can find, uh, you can find help. You can find... Uh, we will have comp competitions. We have assets. Um, an old black hole. A few old black hole assets as well, actually. Just if you're interested. <laughs> um... I'm going to be putting, I'm going to be making a Patreon pretty soon. Uh, that's going to have the blend files that from this course. Um, and then I'll put um, more blend files on there. Uh, so my belief that information should be relatively free will persist, but I don't want people just downloading assets and not learning anything. So, but I do want people to be able to, if they are in short, of time. Uh, anyway, that's it. Have a good one, guys. Happy blending. I'll see you later.